In the Gospel reading from John 17, this is our Lord's great high priestly prayer for the disciples, for His apostles, before going on to His passion. He says, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. Now in the scriptures, the world is referred to or can refer to two different things. And they're actually two opposite things. First of all, the world is the object of God's creative love and energies. In Psalm 24 or 23 in the Septuagint, we read that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. And in Genesis, we read that God creates the world and says that it's good. And not only good, but very good. And through this created world, we can come to know the Creator. Romans chapter 1 Verse 20, God's invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. Just by prayerfully and joyfully contemplating on the created world, we can come to know God. Father Alexander Schmemann said, All that exists is God's gift to man, and it all exists to make God known to man, to make man's life communion with God. God blesses everything he creates, and in biblical language, this means that he makes all creation the sign and means of his presence and wisdom, love and revelation. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So that's one way that the world is framed. But the other way that the world is framed, and we certainly heard it in the Gospel reading today, is the world is spoken of as a rival to God. In Romans 12, we read, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And in James 4, verse 4, Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Now, this is not a contradiction. And this does not represent some kind of, you know, two different philosophies about the world that the scriptures are presenting. Because both of these things are true. That the world is both glorious and a revelation of God's beauty, and it is also a locus of rebellion. And so what's the difference? Well, the question is not really what's the difference, the question is where is the difference? Alexander Solzhenitsyn said that the line between good and evil runs through every human heart. The difference is in the value that we give the world. It's in how we look at the world. Part of our job since the beginning was to work with God to, to keep the order and balance and beauty of the world, to tend the garden. That was our job. And we do that by paying attention to it in the proper way. When we hear that call from the deacon, let us attend, that is a very important instruction because so much in the world depends on how we pay attention to it. Also in Romans 1, we learn that the origin of sin is that human beings worshipped and served the creation rather than the Creator. You see, if we attend to the world as an end in and of itself, as the ultimate source of meaning and value and comfort and wisdom, as the ultimate source, with nothing beyond it, then we make the world an enemy of God. But if we attend to creation in its proper way, the way that God intended it for the reasons that he gave it to us, as the means through which we can come to love and worship God, 
and love and serve our neighbor, then the world becomes beauty and balance and a reflection of God's own loving creative energy. Look, it is a messed up world. Fathers, happy Father's Day. What can I do to make the world a better place for my children? High school graduates, we're honoring them today, sending them into this world. How can I make an impact on this world? Well, we start by attending to the world in the proper way. We cannot place all of our hopes for every answer in this world. It, they just don't exist there. But we attend to the world by looking for the handwriting of God on it. And through this amazing creation, coming closer to Him as we rejoice in it and use it to serve our neighbor. See, Christ sends us into this broken world to be his agents. And it is our job, in his name, and through the grace of his Holy Spirit, to make it again be an icon, reflecting his handiwork and his beauty. Let us attend, let us attend in the right way, and the whole world becomes paradise again. To God be all glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.